Simplicity is a great word to describe tonight's episode because there was two storylines and that was it. And I absolutely loved it. Now I've said I really like when Grey's Anatomy will do, you know, three storylines with two sub storylines. And I actually don't even mind if those storylines don't come together at the end. And clearly here with the A and B storyline, they didn't come together. But I like the idea of having a cut down cast, and we'll talk about the characters that weren't uh, in the episode. But you have majority of your cast involved in one storyline, and you have a few others involved in another. And then at the end, that's the episode. It's simple, and it's very easy to digest, and it's fun to watch. Now, the reason why I prefer this style to the other one, and I I'm, honestly, I do like both, but my reasoning for liking the two to the, you know, the three plus storylines is it just allows for a, a more fun viewing experience and also you kind of know like that your characters are all involved in a particular you know story as opposed to you know jumping around to seeing you know Meredith in a love triangle to seeing Joe dealing with Alex to see Bailey and Richard dealing with something else if that was a you know just for an example so overall I really do like the idea of just the two storylines that we have here now um, I do want to say I took a lot of notes so if you see me referring uh, to the notes and not looking at the camera um, I do apologize, but I, I wrote a lot because I really thought the winner takes it all deserved a lot of scrutiny just because, not even scrutiny, a lot of discussion because of just of how good it was. So um, for characters that were cut, Alex, Joe, and Owen were cut from the episode and Kim Raver was in the episode, which I thought was really weird, but we'll talk about Kim Raver at the end of the episode. Now, Alex doesn't make a lot of sense to me for being cut and we'll talk about that towards the end of the review as well joe and owen more or less make sense to being cut because of their their lesser involvement with the characters that were on screen throughout the majority of this episode and then there was some other characters as well that had a uh, non-speaking cameo roles like you saw parker you saw lincoln you saw a couple other uh interns and the like which i like i like the fact that even though they're not speaking they're not involved you see them and so the idea of the, you know these characters being involved in the hospitals there as well it just allows for tension and allows for um, additional thought about what could be happening in future episodes. So I really did like that quite a bit. So the the two storylines in this episode, as we know, um, were Catherine's surgery and <coughs> excuse me, and uh, Meredith making amends with Thatcher. Now from the trailer, it, they gave off the impression that Catherine was going to die, and I gotta say. I never once thought she was going to die. I really thought that Thatcher was going to be the one to die, and sadly, he did. We'll talk about that towards the end of the review as well. But the characters that were involved in, in um, Catherine's surgery were absolutely perfect. They have Richard, you know, her husband. They have Jackson, her son. They have Maggie, her um, her stepdaughter, and his her son's uh, girlfriend. You have Bailey, who's Richard's person. And you have Amelia, who, you know, is dealing with Karasik, because Karasik and Catherine... Uh, um, well, first off, well, the surgeons Amelia and Karasik, but Karasik and Catherine have a really intense relationship as well. So it made a lot of sense in that regard. And then, you know, you have Teddy Altman, who was in the episode, but just at the beginning and the end. And as I said, we'll talk about her uh, as the review gets closer to being wrapped up. But I didn't think that she was going to die. I knew there'd be a complication. There was a complication. They couldn't get all the cancer. There's like a cell or something left. And so now she has to go through treatment. And, you know, the, the episode was hyping up the intensity that she could die. It was very obvious, especially where you, where you have that amazing, amazing sequence where Jackson breaks down in front of Maggie. Jesse Williams was so flawless there, like where he was able to equivalent what's happening with his mother to what happened with Samuel, I thought was fantastic. And then that like that little tear that Kelly McCurry was able to have because, you know, she was relating to Jackson because she had lost her mother and Jackson could possibly lose his mother. I thought that was just it, it, it touched me. It was it was beautiful. Now, another uh, character that I truly loved in this episode was Tom Karasik. And I got to say, Greg German, he's truly in his his um, his prime here with this role. I really love him as Tom Karasik. And if anyone has to become a main character in the future, I would say make Greg German a main character over Chris Carmack. Because personally, I just don't care for Chris Carmack's character. I don't think Chris Carmack is that good of an actor. I don't think he's a bad actor but I don't think he's like, you know, like he's not jumping up the screen to me. But Greg German, he crushes Karasik. And honestly, I could see him fitting in very well at Grace Sloan Memorial Hospital. Um, another thing I also liked about uh, the A storyline was the dance out scene 
right before uh, Catherine's surgery. I just thought that was fun. You know, Grey's Anatomy is known for dance out scenes. I thought it was funny we had a dance out scene without Meredith in it. I bet you'd be a little jealous on some, in some regard to that. So overall, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy with the result of the A storyline. I thought it was just perfectly acted. The characters involved were great. And it was it was just very touching and very heartwarming to see. Um, and then in the B storyline, we have Meredith making amends with Thatcher. And I liked how they discussed Lexi. I liked how they discussed Meredith's life and how they even discussed um, Thatcher's life. I, I really do like that. The only thing about it I didn't like was the fact that they killed him. And I knew it was going to happen. It was very, very obvious just given how sick he was. But Jeff Perry is such a good actor. Like, why don't have him be in like three to five episodes? Give him a mini arc. Allow Meredith and his relationship to grow. So his death kind of hits a little bit closer to home for her. Now, I know having him die eventually or at all would be devastating in some level, especially if they get close and then, you know, he's taken from her. But I just feel it was a little bit of a waste because he was gone for seven years because of, you know, he was gone because he was on scandal. He wasn't um, gone because I think they forgot about him, but it made sense because they killed Lexi and then he had a main care, a main role on scandal. So uh, behind the scenes reasons, it made total sense. But, you know, to have him be involved, he talked about how he wanted to be involved with her, with uh, his grandkids and whatnot. Like, I really would have liked seeing that and then have him just get sick and die. And then I think it would have just made even more sense, especially when he talked about uh, how Maggie was a good thing that came out of Richard and Alice's affair. I really did like that. I thought that was really uh, touching. But, I, I mean, Ellen Pompeo and Jeff Perry, they worked really well together. It was a, a very, very touching couple scenes of them just discussing it. And uh, then he died. And she was there when he died. And, you know, he, she put his... Uh, she put her hands on his face and he passed and it was touching, honestly. It was just a really, really good scene, a uh, couple scenes to watch. And I, th there's no more dissection to it because, well, that's it. It's just, they talked, they reminisced, they talked about Lexi, he died. So um, let's talk about uh, one more thing with the A storyline where you have um, Catherine having um, cancer left in her body. So she's going to be living with cancer and... I didn't think Debbie Allen was going to leave the show because she's just so involved with the behind-the-scenes aspect of Grey's Anatomy. But my guess is because of her um, sickness, she, Catherine will be in less episodes. So she'll make maybe an appearance every, I don't know, five or so episodes now. I mean, the show's 20, uh, 25 episodes this season, so she has a lot of more episodes to be in. But it makes sense to have her, uh, you know, have cancer so Debbie Allen can do more production, more directing, and the like. Now, the last thing I briefly want to talk about is um, Kim Raver and um, Justin Chambers. Now, in the beginning of the episode, we saw uh, Teddy talk to Karasik. He's playing Operation Hill. That was hilarious. And I was like, why is she here? Because, like, she, you know, Owen's not going to be here. And she's not on the surgery. There's no traumas. It's it's very odd. And then at the end of the episode, you know, she talks to Karasik again. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant writing. So what they're doing here is they're dropping hints for the, the love square, I'm calling it. And I really like that. And first up, I really want Kim Reaver to have more to do. I think Teddy Altman is a really fun character. I like Teddy. I like Kim. And I want to see more. And I, I need more than just, I'm pregnant. Give me some, like, give her something else to do. Like, there needs to be more than just her being pregnant with Owen's baby. And then um, I thought about Justin Chambers that I want to briefly, briefly discuss is... It would have made sense if Justin Chambers had the same role as Kim Raver in this episode, where he talks to Meredith before she goes to meet Thatcher and then talks to Meredith about the results of seeing Thatcher. It just would have made more sense to me because, you know, they, they have piped up. And it is true that Alex is her person, so why not have the person, you know, her person be involved with a very difficult reunion? But overall, the episode was fantastic. Um, excellently played, excellent, excellently it was very well paced, excuse me. Fantastic episode, greatly paced, and amazing acting. Standout performances definitely go to Greg German and Jesse Williams. That scene where he cried is perfect. Uh, Greg German just stood out, especially when he was talking to his son at the end of the episode. And I look I look forward to honestly hearing your thoughts about the episode in the comments. Two storylines, so simple, beautifully written, beautifully directed, beautiful camera work. I think the trailer for next week is fun. This episode was a little, a little bit more serious. So... I, I really did like it, and I'm looking forward to seeing episode 12. So anyway, share your thoughts about this episode in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my review of it. And I'll get the promo pics and the trailer view out for episode um, 12 very, very soon. All right, guys. Bye.